haven't even started, there's already glitter everywhere. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Blue Lady Couture Studio and today I am doing my hashtag historical Halloween 2020 contribution. So what is hashtag historical Halloween 2020? Uh, basically, it is a group of us uh, YouTubers who form part of the CosTube community and we have got together under the guidance of, and I hope I get these names right, uh, Kiri Lee Cosplay and Lady Rebecca Fashions. I'll link their channels down below. Uh, but basically, they came up with this idea to, because we can't go out and about to parties or anything this year for Halloween um, and we had to stay at home then we would stay at home in style and have a go at making some vintage Halloween costumes. Uh, this came about because uh, the two ladies involved have copies of early 20th century uh, costume catalogues um, and some of these date back to like the 1880s and they're full of these gorgeous costume ideas for Halloween, for pageants, theatricals, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, they have these beautiful um, fashion illustrations in them basically um, and the themes for them are just incredible. Um, so there's all sorts from you know, your, your typical kind of Halloween costumes through to slightly not so appropriate costumes in the 21st century, but we're gonna, yeah, we're not gonna Concentrate on those, um, to the allegorical, mythical, um, and like weird advertising costumes as well. Um, yeah, they're just amazing, um, and so you're spoiled for choice, whatever your kind of theming for your Halloween costume might be. So yeah, so a group of us have basically got together to do our own versions of these costumes, um, and this is my contribution. Uh, there will be a full playlist uh, that I can hopefully link to as well, which if, if you like this, you can go and watch everybody else's um, contributions and see what crazy, wonderful costumes they've been making. Uh, and you can also follow the hashtag historical Halloween 2020 on Instagram as well. So you can get some more behind the scenes uh, images um, and uh, yeah, see what people have been doing on there as well. So what am I doing for historical Halloween 2020? Yeah, this is where you find me procrastinating. Because <laughs> I've literally got to the day that I'm supposed to be doing this project and I'm still umming and ahhing between two different designs. Yeah, go me. This is a great start to this project. <laughs> two designs that I am kind of going back and forth between. Um, they're both night sky lunar kind of themed and the reason I picked them is because I decided as soon as I kind of heard about this project and was thinking about getting involved I realised the only way I, I could do this really was to use fabric from my stash. It's kind of been my rule for this year and I know I've already done one project this year that I didn't use fabric from my stash for so I was like nope I am not buying fabric for this it will have to come from my stash or I'm not doing it. Um, and as I was going through the, uh, the dozens and dozens of uh, images from the, the pages of these, these catalogues, um, I basically came across the, these night sky themed um, kind of allegorical kind of costumes um, and I just fell in love with them because um, it's kind of, I love that kind of theming. And I happen to have, hopefully, the perfect fabric already in my stash, which is this you can see here, which it looks amazing, <laughs> but it is glittery and I'm already crying at the amount of glitter I can see on my table already. So I may have serious regrets about this project and this fabric. And I know, I know, glittery fabric is mm, a little bit frowned on now because we all know that these little bits of glitter are just little tiny bits of plastic. And yeah, it's not good for the environment. However, I bought this fabric years ago, over three years ago, maybe, maybe longer. Um, with I just because I loved it. It was starry and glittery and sparkly and blue, and I loved it. So it kind of fell into my basket um, in an online shop, and 
yeah, and then it came and just sat in my stash um, ever since. Um, I just haven't found the perfect project that I want to use, but I had ideas, but they've never really gone any further, and yeah, it's, it's just sat there. So when this project came along, I actually thought, maybe this is it. This is the project that I can make a really, really pretty vintage style dress um, out of this gorgeous, glittery, starry fabric. Um, so yeah, so that's that fabric. Um, I also have some dark blue crepe satin, which I think is left over for some bridesmaid projects that I did years and years ago, way back at the start of uh, Blue Lady Couture, some of the earliest uh, cost some of the earliest uh, custom commissions uh, that I did. I did some lovely bridesmaid dresses in that fabric. Um, and I've also got some silvery fabric here, which depending on which design I go for, um, or that I would use to create the, the moons or some additional star detailing. So the first design I came across, which I absolutely adore, is this 1920s Luna gown, Luna dress, which is absolutely beautiful. You can see why I thought that my starry fabric would be perfect for it, um, because it's got this lovely drapey detail, um, and then all these little stars on it, and it looks like it has these sheer sleeves on it, um, and I think the the base layer is kind of a sheer overlay as well. And at first thought, I thought yeah, this is a really nice, simple 1920s design. I can probably use my uh, 1920s one hour dress pattern that I made earlier this year um, so it wouldn't take me too long but the more I'm thinking about it maybe I'm overthinking I don't know um, but the more I'm thinking about it the more I'm thinking this is perhaps a little bit more complicated than I first thought um, and it's going to use quite a bit more fabric than I first thought as well because of the the wraparound detail on it and also the sleeves they're quite large sleeves um, so yeah, so my first thought is that I may need to double check how much fabric, I've got. well I know how much fabric I've got, um, but whether I think I can actually get this pattern out of it, um, because this design is my first choice to create. Um, then the second design is this one, which is a slightly earlier kind of 1910s design I think, um, but it's really, really pretty, um, but a bit more simplistic um, and at first glance I didn't like the kind of the fabric kind of styles on it quite so much but I do love this shooting star effect um so if I turn the camera you can see that a bit better um where there's a split um and it kind of creates a shooting star effect in the pleating detail which is kind of quite a nice uh, idea um but I feel that again my Obviously, I had in my head that I wanted to use the starry fabric. This is a lot more plainer fabrics, although I could potentially use the star fabric um, underneath. Here is the underskirt, and this is going to be really chunky footage. I am very sorry for that. Um, yeah, so I could use the starry fabric for an underskirt and the belt, and then I may actually have enough fabric, well, obviously the shoulder details as well, that I may still have enough fabric left over to make the veil um, at the back can see attached to her headdress and it also attaches to her wrists um, which adds a really pretty kind of mythological kind of feel to it. Um, I could also potentially if I use this design the underskirt could potentially be a standalone skirt on its own which gives me more opportunity to potentially wear this wonderful glitter shedding fabric <laughs> for other events or you know just because I can wear it around the house you know why not um so that's a consideration and uh, I also think I could use the 1920s one hour dress pattern for this with a few minor tweaks to it um so that's a possibility and again I think this uses slightly less fabric than the other design because it doesn't have the the, the, the crossover the wrap over um asymmetrical effect on it so yeah, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the fabric out and lay the pattern out um, and have a play around and see what I can get out or what I think I can get out because I do really like this design. I think this one is my favourite. Um, I may be able to, perhaps if I didn't use the, I could take the sleeves off and have just a more strappy kind of 1920s dress. It might work quite nicely. 
So I'm not 100% sold on the sleeves, if I'm honest with you. Um, they're a bit big. I mean, I know they're going for that kind of mythological uh, look again, but yeah, I'm not sold on those. So it may be that I just scrap the sleeves um, and then I might be able to get the, the dress pieces out of it. We shall see. So that's my plan before we go any further, is to make a decision on actually what I'm making. And then, yeah, that's going to be dependent on what I can get out of the fabric. So let's see. Right. First things first, I've decided I'm going to lay this out on my floor because it's just got a little bit more room than my pattern cutting table. My pattern cutting table is great, but it's uh, yeah, it's just not quite wide enough for this particular fabric. Oh, so <laughs> I'm just looking at this. I can see all the glitter just hanging inside. Oh my, I'm going to regret this so much. Oh my god, there's so much glitter in it. Oh my god. Oh, it's just falling through the holes onto the floor. <laughs> I'm regretting this so much already. Oh, I don't think it was going to do that. I thought it would just slide down the inside. Oh, some of it's going to. Oh my god. Oh, that's why, because it's not actually. Oh, it's actually where the, the edge of the fabric is. That's why the glitter's all falling out there. Oh, what an idiot. I mean, I'm hoping that once the worst of the loose glitter is out of it, it will be um, not quite so bad. It could have been a lot worse. And obviously there's a bit on the floor as well. I'm going to be finding glitter for months. This isn't going well. As suspected, it's more complicated than I thought to do the, the lunar version of the dress and <laughs> cut the fabric wrong. So yeah, I only have two meters and I can't get any more. Um, so I'm going to try and salvage this. I think I can salvage it into the other dress style, hopefully. Um, if I've got, yeah, I'm hoping because since I just need the skirt and the top bit for the, um, the top of the bodice, um, there wouldn't be enough for the veil. So. Forget the veil, we're not doing the veil. Um, that was just that if I did have enough, it'd be nice, but I don't, yeah, so I just gotta do the, I think I can salvage it. I think I'll check back with you later. Okay, we are making teeny tiny bits of progress. <laughs> oh, so I've cut out, um, using the, the 1920s one I dress pattern um, as my base, I've cut out some, uh, bodice pieces, which are the same front and back in the satin, and then I have uh, lacy overlays front and back uh, for the shoulder sections. So I'm going to put those together now. Then hopefully I can get the the basic shape together and just pop on the mannequin. <laughs> to start sewing but let's find something to put on in the background shall we and can I just say my YouTube feed is on point with the Halloween aesthetic today and this has been coming up on my suggested list for well the last two weeks so I'm thinking that might be rather apt to put on while I sew up this vintage style dress Let's have a look, shall we? This could be horrific. Okay. That'll do nicely. Okay, so I had the basic bodice together so I've got the lower kind of midsection of the bodice here and then I've got these shoulder pieces in the sparkly uh, tool um, as well so I'm just going to do a couple more tweaks to it um, before I kind of sort of set them in place 
Um, so what I want to do is, you see I've pinned here, I've pinned the shoulders up just to lift it um, as this line was sitting a little bit too low for my liking, although it does look quite low on the, uh, the illustration, um, but I'm not comfortable with it being that low. Uh, it's just a little bit more height, it's just a little bit nicer, I think. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to do that. So I just there, I've pinned in place, so I just need to pin that off, the, uh, stitch that off there, sorry, and um, I'll French seam it to finish that off as well. Then I want to square off um, here so it's a little bit more appropriate for 1910s. Um, so I just need to take out the stitching here and just bring that back a little bit so it's not going to be fully square but just a little bit more squared off than bead off I think um, is what I'm going to go with with that one. Um, and then there will be a central star motif to go in the middle here anyway with some sparkles coming down I think which will look quite nice um, so yeah um, I'm happy I mean the length I can adjust um, it needs to be loose enough and long enough that it's going to kind of blouse on blouse on blouse on over the, the sort of waistband when it's tied in so it needs to be sort of just loose enough and just long enough that you've got that little bit of in there as well so that's fine so I can tweak with that um, and then I'll need to put the the lining in which will turn over that seam there as well so you get a nice edge on there so so far it's going okay oh and one more thing I'm going to do on the back um, I'm just going to drop the line around the back here just a little bit more I think just to it's a, it's sort of gaping a little bit here, but I think if I drop the the curve down onto the actual nape of the neck, um, it will sit a bit better. And then I also want to, I think I'm going to bind the edge of the neck, probably with a little bit of this um, tool, um, so it's not too clashy, too garish, um, and kind of blends in, but it'll just finish the edge off on there nicely and stop it warping, hopefully too much um, when it's been being worn. That's, that's the idea in theory. So onwards. So it's a little bit later now and I have the bodice pretty much finished apart from um, uh, some decorative details which will go on at the end. Um, and I've still got to attach it to the, the skirt but that's the next stage. But she's looking pretty and sparkly. Okay, sparkly. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of pleased so far. Um, I've edged the neckline in a strip of the tulle that didn't have any glitter on it. So right on the edge, on the selvage, um, there was quite a wide band um, that I was able to kind of chop off. And uh, yeah, uh, folded that over carefully, press it off a low setting on my iron, obviously because it's polyester tulle, nylon tulle. Um, it's liable to melt so you have to be careful pressing it and um, but yeah just gently press just to set the sort of creases in it and then I've just been able to add that to the edge um, and because it's not got any of the the glittery bits in it it sews fairly easily and actually, to be honest this stuff isn't sewing too bad I was thinking that especially where these the stars are it's quite thick it's quite chunky um, I wasn't sure how my machine was going to cope uh, with sewing that, but it seems to be going fine. It's just occasionally, um, it's the, the thickness, um, you just have to ease it through the machine with a, a little bit more, but in general it's not too bad. Um, the, the actual needle is going through the, the, the glittery bits absolutely fine, so that's, that's good. Um, so yeah, so I'm quite pleased with how that's looking so far. So there's just decorative details to finish off on that, so I'm going to go have a break and I shall come back and do some more sewing on the skirt section. So the next job is to figure out the skirts. Um, there's, well there's two layers, so you've got an under layer here, uh, which is the starry fabric which matches uh, the, uh, the shoulder pieces up there. Um, and then I've got the overskirt in the satin and then I need to contrast the uh, panels here uh, where it's folded back on itself to create the kind of the waterfall pleat effect which gives the effect of the the shooting star uh, kind of detail so yeah so I think what I'm going to do first is do the the underskirt in the the starry fabric which shouldn't be too um 
too complicated it's just a kind of loosely gathered skirt um, and it's not too full either which fortunately is where I made the mistake this morning and cut the fabric too narrow um, and yeah however that I think that's going to work for this for 1910 skirts you don't necessarily want it to be too too full so um, but it's better to start too full and I can always take it in if needs be um, as we go along so yeah I shall start with that and then I shall have a play around with the the satin skirt in a bit So I have marked out the, obviously the split is off centre, it's to one side, so I've worked out roughly where I want the pleat to be, uh, the pleat, the gap to be, and worked out the difference between the two sides, so you can see, we won't be able to see on the table here, that one side is, well the two pieces laid out here and one side is narrower than the other, and I've marked in the curve of the, the bottom of the swag detail here. With the idea being that once it's pleated over and I've marked out three inch box pleats, there's two three inch pleats, um, which will then create the that lovely ripple effect on the bottom. So now all I need to do is mark out what I need for the satin. I'm not going to fully line the skirt in satin because I haven't got enough um, and as we know I am trying desperately hard to use fabric from my stash so if I can get away with using a scrap um, that just covers enough for the pleat section so that's because that's the only bit you're going to see um, when the, the pleats are, are folded back on themselves so that's the plan and if I spin you around also you can just about see excuse me the mess in the background um, I've got the the base layer of the star fabric uh, sort of cut out together and it's uh, just loosely gathered um, and pinned in place on the mannequin just so I can see how that's looking at the moment. Perhaps a fraction narrower than I'd want but you know it is what it is now so I think it's fine I can get away with it for sort of late 19 sort of teens. Um, skirts tend to be quite sort of narrow and tubular um, so you don't want it too full at the bottom but I'm going to play around with possibly putting I need something else underneath it obviously whether that's a lining fabric uh, which will just give it a little bit more body or some more uh, tulle I just I haven't got another uh, another dark blue I've got different shades of blue it's so whether that's just going to throw off the whole colour scheme uh, so yeah we shall see but uh, it's looking so pretty and sparkly and I'm kind of sad that I'm going to cover most of this up and you're only going to see a little bit in the split but hey ho we're trying to be good and actually follow the pattern design. The joy of using scrap fabric <laughs> from the stash if you find random bits cut out of it. It's just going to be wide enough. Mm. Oh god. Mm. God, do you know what? I might actually get away with it. So I think I may have got away with it, just. <laughs> so one side is sort of pressed in place at the moment, the other side isn't properly pressed out yet. Um, so I've just pinned it on the mannequin very quickly, just so you can have a quick look before I break for some tea. 
Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to play around with just how where the pleats are sitting a little bit more um, and see how it looks. But it's certainly coming along. It just seems like a quite a big wide chunk here. And also I've got to have the star go on here. Um, but I is only ickle, so I'm just like that. That's going to be a bit too chunky. So I might have another play around with the pleats after dinner. And let's see where we're at. But otherwise, that's pretty good. And I'm really pleased that that strip of satin worked out. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm just a great believer in fate. I believe it happens for a reason. And if, you know, I clearly was not meant to do the other dress um, that I started this morning, I was supposed to do this one. So, yeah. On that note, I'm going for some dinner. So here's a first look at the dress on. As you can see, I've now attached the skirt, so that's the overskirt and the sparkly underskirt layer. And I've got the pleats. Wow. I think they're looking quite nice. If you excuse the ribbon, um, it's just the quickest way that I could just cinch in the waist to try on as I've not done the actual belt part yet. That'll be a job for tomorrow, I think. But for a first try on, that is looking pretty pretty, if I do say so. Um, and it's certainly looking like a product of the 1910s. So it's definitely got the fullness around the waist and the fullness down, but it's not poof, <laughs> you know, it's got that kind of tubular straight look that you get in the mid 1910s. So it's not bad. I'm debating whether I just need to bring the waist up a little bit. It's not sitting Whereas once I've got it, no, I don't know, yeah, I don't know, I think I need to bring, especially, where's, see, I think the very front is okay, but I think it's dropped a bit at the back, so I think the back needs to just come up a smidge. But it's very sparkly and very pretty. I can't wait to get the additional sparkles just on the front hose. It feels a bit plain. <laughs> and a bit, yeah, it definitely needs something there. And then obviously you've got the stars going to go on the waist and the sort of swagged sash. I mean, and I said this in the 1920s video. Is this my favourite era of costume? This, yeah. Well, I could fit it, but it's a whole, if it was any tighter, I wouldn't get it off and on because it doesn't have a fastening, it's just a over the head jobby because it's based off my 1920s pattern, but there's so many similarities between those sort of that mid to late 1910s era and then also the early 1920s, you know, you didn't get to 1920 and everything suddenly just changed. These kind of styles were already in fashion a lot earlier than you think. If you look at the picture, no, don't turn off. I mean, when you look at that, it's really quite kind of drapey and loose kind of over her waist. It's really quite a loose fitted dress. I've just got the little cinch in with the um with the waistband drape where the star is. But otherwise, surprisingly, this is quite comfy to wear actually. I was expecting this to be really scratchy and, and quite itchy and not very nice, but it's actually not bad. Um the outside is a little bit rough, it does tend to catch on other fabrics, but 
the inside against the skin is actually quite smooth and nice, which for this kind of fabric, not bad. But yeah, I think I do need to, I'm gonna need to bring that waistline up. Okay, yeah. And then I need to work out what I'm putting underneath. Because obviously I've got my tights on under here at the moment, which is, Surprisingly, I mean, maybe it's just the, the pore line is not as bad as <laughs> maybe it's just my modern sensibilities. Oh, it's fine, that's just plague. But I think I probably do need to put something else underneath it. Maybe it's just a little bit more tulle just to make it a little bit more opaque. Good morning, everyone. It's the next day, and I am carrying on with my hashtag historical Halloween 2020 project. I think the last thing you would have seen was me trying the dress on late last night. It was my first time kind of trying the, the bodice and the skirt all together um, to see how it looked and a few little tweaks that I need to make today. Um, I'm really sorry if you can hear my uh, laptop, uh, the fans are whizzing around in it on the processor so I'm sorry if you can hear that it's <laughs> I do apologize um so yeah so what am I doing today I am carrying on with my dress um I was umming and ahhing last night about changing the the waistline depth on it and I think I am especially on the back and kind of and sort of tapering it around to the sides the front isn't too bad and um, but the back definitely needs to come up a little bit I think so that's my first job to do today uh, then I'm going to do um, I've got some finishing off to do on it. Um, I need to, once I'm happy with where the waistband is, I can then stitch the lining in around the waist and I then need to hand sew, well I'm going to, I need to hand sew the, the satin facing, the silver satin facing, I need to, I'm going to whip stitch this down by hand just so the stitching doesn't show on the, the outside of the dress, so I shall do that by hand where I can just gently catch in on the back of the, the blue crepe satin. I then need to finish the hem um, and I think what I'm going to do with the hem is use a, a band of uh, bias binding um, so I can stitch that on and then fold it to the inside and again I'll whip stitch that down by hand um, so you can't really see it on the outside and that will finish that off nicely. Um, I then need to, I think I'm going to finish off the sleeves in the same way that I've done the neckline if I can scrounge enough of the fabric to do that um, and I then need to make the waistband and work out what I'm doing with this drapey um, sort of swag that sits around the waist as well uh, because I am literally down to scraps on this on the sparkly fabric so um, I'm really sorry about the light I might have to film this bit again we shall see how bad that looks um, yeah, so I do work on doing that. So, first things first, sort out the, uh, the waistline um, and then carry on from there. Can I also just say, my husband can be very cute when he wants to be as well. Look what he's done to my sewing machine. He salvaged these stickers, um, we used to be on my old laptop, um, which has had to go away and I've had to get a new laptop but he's managed to salvage these stickers off it for me and he's put them on my sewing machine. I don't know how long they're going to survive being on here but they are so cute because you can't have too much Disney in your life. And a little bit of Disney magic in the workroom never goes amiss. It's a little bit later now and I've finished um, some of what I was planning to do this morning. So I've taken up the waist at the sides and the back, so that's sitting a little bit more even now. Um, I've also put the band around the hem and stitched that in by hand. Um, I've still got to finish off hand stitching the these facings in, but I've decided I'm going to do that later on tonight because I can do that in front of the TV or something. And get glitter all over the sofa, which my husband will love. Um, but I've decided I'm going to carry on um, with sort of the more machine sewing bits and pieces that I need to do for now. Um, so I've pinned um, the fabric I'm going to be using for the waistband in place just to cinch it in on the mannequin, and that's looking okay. And I'll have a play around with that in a bit. But my next job is to 
sort out what I'm going to put underneath uh, the glittery uh, tool um, because I need to attach that to the waistband really um, before I can do any more finishing off like attaching the lining on the inside so yeah so obviously this is a little bit sheer and I think I said in some of my videos from yesterday that I don't have any dark blue tool to go underneath so I have raided my stash for what I do have and I have apparently I have a tool problem <laughs> and I have some light pink here as well I don't think that's going to work but it's there anyway um, and I do have some purple as well but again I don't think that's going to work and I might use that for another project so I don't really want to use that unless I have to so I'm going to see if hopefully one of these blues work um, I'm hoping it'll be one of these two um, because again I think this one is a nice sort of powdery blue colour I think I'll have another project I can use that for so I'd like to keep that to one side if I can um, and then there are these two now to be honest I did originally buy these to go with this glitter tool for the kind of the project I kind of had in mind and I kind of bought a load of fabric um, and then nothing kind of really happened with it um, so yeah the, the idea was to always use these kind of shades of blue underneath the or with this, this sparkly tool um, so in theory it should work but it's which one works best really obviously neither of them are quite the right colour but we shall see because obviously they'll look very different once they're underneath and you're not really going to see much of it it's just to add a little bit more um, or make this the slit a little bit more modest really um, so we shall see so I'm just going to pin it underneath there basically and just see what which one looks best and go from there I mean I don't think the pink one's going to work I think the pink one's going to be too yeah I think that's far too light yeah How sparkly it is. It's so sparkly and pretty. I'm kind of sad that it's hidden underneath the, the satin layer, but hey come on. It's cute that you just get that little flash of sparkle underneath. Right, so that's that's the more royal blue, then there's this more kind of smoky grey blue, which might actually tone better with the satin. Hmm. See, on camera, I don't think there's a lot of difference in them, but you can obviously see it slightly more in person. Can you see that difference? So I think you can, yeah, actually you can see the blue a bit more <laughs> appearing at the camera screen, not that it matters. Just there's a lot of not a lot of point in doing this if you can't actually see it. So. <laughs> Maybe I'm just overthinking it. I think I might go with the smoky one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, there's two meters of this, I believe. Um so I'm just gonna make a very simple double layered tube skirt uh, and then gather it up onto the waistband after interruption from husband um so yeah I can't remember that's what I said but um yes yeah, so I think I have two meters here um so all I'm going to do is fold it in half to create a double uh, layer um and then seam it down uh, one edge to create a, just a simple tube and then uh, gather it up lightly onto the waistband. It won't need too much gathering and I don't want too much gathering because it's not that style of petticoat. I don't want, whew, it's just a little bit of volume and it just adds a little bit of more, um, less opacity to the to the dress by having additional layers underneath. Um, but I don't think it's any harm to just have a little bit extra underneath as well. And then I can just chop off the length um, to where it needs to be uh, once I get it back on the mannequin. Um, so that's nice and easy and the beauty of tulle is 
I don't have to edge it if I don't want to, I can just leave it nicely cut, providing I just cut it nice and neatly, and the, the selvage is all nicely finished as well, so that can just be seamed without any kind of edging on it. Yay! We like that kind of thing. So rather than attach the skirt to the, or the additional tool layer to the actual dress itself, I've decided to just turn it into a separate petticoat. Um, I've just run a, a channel through the top of the, the two layers of, of tool um, and then run um, some elastic through it. So it's just a nice stretchy elastic petticoat just to wear underneath. And it means I can potentially wear it with other stuff as well, maybe. Um, yeah, so I'm going to pop that onto the mannequin underneath and then we'll see how it looks. Is my hair gone? What is my hair doing? Uh, you can tell I've been outside in the wind. <laughs> Cutting out the star shape to use as a template for the, the detail on the belt, um, when it suddenly crossed my mind that a six point star may not be appropriate for me to use. Um, I may be wrong, um, but I, obviously I do know that it is a, a symbol of Judaism um, and I don't want to misappropriate that in any way. So I've decided to swap it out for a, a five point star, um, which is a more generic kind of star shape, um, but also a five point star has more personal um, connotations for me and my religious beliefs. So yeah, I'm going to go for the five point star and it's actually five point stars that are used on the, the dress material as well. So yeah, so I'm hoping <laughs> that's the right thing to do. Um, but I honestly didn't cross my mind that the, the star on the original image is a, is a six point star of David. Is it a star of David if it's not? Let me know in the comments down below because I don't know. Is a tradition is a star of David the two triangles where you can see the two triangles, or you know is is that that still a star of David? I'm going to say that is still a star of David and also still has connotations of Judaism, so I don't want to use that. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below um, to make make let me know that I'm making the right decision I think is what I'm trying to say there and but yeah I'm more comfortable I think using the the five point star so for the belt I have made up a belt <laughs> um essentially I'm using the method I use to make my waistbands on skirts um so it is just a strip cut to the measurement I need about an inch bigger than my waist so it just has a little bit of overlap if I need it but there should be enough there to accommodate the, the fullness and the gathers um, around the waist of the of the dress once it's it's pulled in. So yeah, so it's just a strip of fabric, and then I've used my self adhesive uh, waist tape interfacing. Is the word I'm looking for um, on the inside to stiffen it, so it'll be nice and stiff. Um, and the great thing about this is it has little perforations in it, so it folds nicely right where you want it. And I actually like to cut my uh, waistbands just a little bit wider than the actual uh, the interfacing you're supposed to fold it there on the little notches but I like to actually use the very edge of the uh, of the interfacing itself to create my, my folded edge um, and you may just see I have just uh, stay stitched it there as well just to keep it in place because sometimes this stuff doesn't 100% stick, especially by the time you've folded it in and out and, and pressed it and then you've moved it around, it tends to not always stick 100% even with the use of a, a good iron, but you also have to be careful when you're using polyester that you don't use your iron too hot, but that means you don't then get issues like the interfacing not sticking. So yeah, so I'm just going to turn that through now. Then my idea is um, I have made my first star. Stars up there. 
I've made my little star as well, which is now cut out in these silver satin. Um, so both sides are in the silver, and then inside I have used a piece of corsetry kutil, so a quite heavy, sturdy sort of uh, cotton, which just gives it a nice bit of structure, but without it being too stiff. Um, so that's why, so that's looking quite nice, and it's nice and shiny. So my idea is that the star is going to hide essentially the join in the waistband, so it'll act as like a sort of decorative buckle in a way. Um, then I also need to figure out how I'm going to attach... The picture has this kind of drape of... Oh, sorry, I get the picture, hang on. The technical laptop demonstration comes out again. Um, so yeah, so as you can see, she's got this kind of swagged drape bit, um, which obviously is fitted around to the waist where the dress is pulled in, but it kind of swags down a bit at the side, and I'm assuming it will then gather up around on the other side, and it's sort of hidden behind the star. So, my issue is, I haven't got much of the star fabric left, I'm literally down to scraps. I think I have one piece that I might get away with using. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to have to play around really and see how that works. It might be that I just attach um, a length of the, the, the tulle to the, the top of the belt, so that the belt is hidden underneath, and then just lightly just kind of gather it round somehow. I'm going to have a play around. We'll, we'll have a play around. We'll see what happens. But yeah, that's the plan. So we are nearly there. Oh, and then I've got, still got to do the, the stars across the front and the headdress as well. So we are getting there, we are getting there, and not far to go at all. So this is like the biggest piece I have left, which is... I tried it yesterday and it's just big enough to get around my waist, so I'm hoping that it will do. And as you can see, the joint fit is good. Does that all work? I mean, I think... It's the best I'm going to do to get that effect, I think. Literally, I've had to pin it in a couple of places, and I'm going to have to catch it in by hand so it just it just loops up those rough bits where I've clearly cut the panels out, and so they're a bit sort of odd shaped, but with a bit of careful just catching it in a couple of places, I think that looks quite possible. We're making progress. I have a sparkly star felt swag thing and I'm just gonna live in it because who doesn't want a sparkly butt? <laughs> so yeah, so I'm just leaving that on because I can, but I carry on. So my next task is the headband. But I think what I'm gonna do is grab the picture. Technology zoom in come on zoom in oh god's sake mm. oh. oh just oh. Oh, this is hard work right so oh, put it focus right hopefully you can see it. I know I'm in shadow but maybe if I put the light on hang on Magic button! Yay! There we go. You probably can't see it all now. Right. Okay, back to where I was. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I swear. Um. Yeah. So she's got this lovely headband, which sits very low on her brow, with a moon emblem. So I'm gonna do the moon pretty much in the same way as I did the star. Um, so two layers of satin and uh, an interlining of the corsetry kutil because that appears to be nice and stiff <clears throat> excuse me and it's not too heavy um, so it should be nice and lightweight to wear but it should still hold its shape then I think for the band I'm gonna do I'm gonna use the waist tape interfacing mm. She says she can grab hold of it. 
um, but I'm going to fold it over properly so it will be that wide. So it's probably a bit wider than what she's got on, but I'd rather have that rather than faff about with a piddly little bit of something. <laughs> I have words. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. So I think I'm going to make that out of the blue because then I'll make the silver of the moon stand out a bit more. Um, and then I might put some little star sparkles on it as well, just to perhaps, I don't know, stylize up a little bit more. We'll have a play. I shall see. Um, but yeah, that is my next task. I shall check back with you soon. Okay, <laughs> I didn't mean to film this behind my hands. <laughs> Basically, I just recorded the bit where I said I'm going to make a, a band. And then I suddenly remembered that I have this band already made. This is a project that I worked on with Crozai Productions quite a few years ago. I've had this hanging up in the studio and it could be perfect. It's a little bit, I don't know if it's a bit, it's kind of a metallic kind of paisley braid, but it might work. So I'm going to make the little moon shape first and have a play around with that. So then I was looking around, but I need something round to draw around to get my moon shape. <laughs> I was like, ooh, moon shape, this is <laughs> my roll of the waistband tape. I'm like, is that too big a <laughs> uh, What can I say? <laughs> it's very technological doing dressmaking, I swear. Moving on. Is a pretty big chunk of moon she's got on her head, so where is it? Maybe doing it this way. It might be a little bit overkill. Is that overkill for a moon on your head for Halloween? Answers in the comments down below. <laughs> Not that I can act on them because I need to make this decision now, but you know, can you ever have a moon too big on your head for Halloween? Let me know. Well, good morning. Oh damn, my voice is really croaky. You can tell I've not, <laughs> not long woken up. Um, yeah, slight change of plans for today. Um, I'm doing a photo shoot for my Halloween costume. <laughs> Um, yeah, so basically I got a message from my friend, um, who you can find as on Instagram as Alice Strange, um, got a message from her yesterday afternoon, mid-afternoon, to say, oh, hey guys, I'm doing the photo shoot for my Halloween costume tomorrow, do you fancy, like, coming along and giving me a hand? Um, you know, and I was like, sure, okay, yeah, we'll give you a hand, we can, you know, socially distance and everything, because I super, you know, just like, uh, help hold some lights and some camera equipment and, and just be on hand for her and uh she's like oh no you know if we've got time we could maybe do joe's costume photo shoot as well so it's like yeah <laughs> so here we are it is now 7 a.m the next morning i finished the dress last night which is yay i got the dress finished which i'm really really pleased about um but yeah, I'm doing a photo shoot. So I, was, I was putting curlers in my hair at midnight last night. It's now only 7am, so I don't know how well the curls are going to have set. Hopefully they'll be set in, you know, in the next hour. I can dry enough that I can do something with. Luckily my hair doesn't take very long to dry because it's quite thin, so that should be good. So yeah, but I obviously now have to try and get hair and makeup done and chuck everything together for a photo shoot in the next couple of hours because we need to be in Lincoln City Centre for 9am. Um, Alice has booked, or she's arranged to have access early into Lincoln Castle um, for her Halloween photo shoot. Um, she's not doing the same Halloween photo shoot challenge as, or the same Halloween challenge as me. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm so sick. <laughs> it's the earliest I've been up for ages. I'm on holiday. I was supposed to be on holiday. And I'm up at, like, before dawn. <laughs> the things I do. Uh, anyway, yeah, so she's not doing the historical Halloween 2020 challenge, but she's doing the Ratchet Halloween uh, challenge. 
she's a massive fan of the TV series Red. I hope that's how you say it. Unfortunately, I don't watch that show. I can't deal with horror, nursing horror, that kind of psychological. I, I just can't watch that kind of thing. So I know it's got amazing, amazing costumes in it. Um, but I just, I can't watch it, unfortunately. But yeah, she's doing that, and she's doing an amazing uh, costume and photo shoot for their special Halloween challenge, their official challenge that the show is doing on, on Instagram. So she's photographing for that today. And I shall be photographing for hashtag historical Halloween 2020. So yeah, it's gonna be a fun day. Um, and I'm sure there'll be some footage of us socially distanced getting together and having a bit of fun later on. So yeah, first things first, a cup of tea and then I need to try and do something with this to make myself look vaguely 1910s. Hey! Welcome to photo shoot sessions. <laughs> Socially distanced, of course. So, we've been really cheeky. We're currently here outside. Well, we're at the Lawns in Lincoln, which is the former um, uh, mental hospital here in Lincoln. Um, but it's now owned by Stokes Coffee. Um, and we're very cheekily, the, the, the ground is open to the public, it's a public park, um, but we're very cheekily just knocked on the doorbell and ask permission if we could just use the door <laughs> um, for Julia who is doing her Ratchet Halloween photos and videos for her Instagram challenge um, can I just say she looks absolutely amazing but yeah go check it out uh, at Alice Strange on Instagram and she does have a YouTube channel as well but I'll link to that down below she looks amazing and she totally deserves to win the Ratchet Halloween Instagram competition. Hello, so I am back from our little impromptu photo shoot that we did this morning or kind of a bit last minute but we did it and as far as I can tell from the footage I've seen got some really good shots um, which you'll either have just seen or I will put it in just after this. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm back now. I've just popped the dress back on the mannequin and I just thought I'd do a little roundup, a little summary and just talk through some of the bits that I'd done last night that I didn't get a chance to film because it was all a bit hectic and last minute suddenly trying to arrange for a photo shoot um, first thing this morning. So yeah, I had to get everything done last night which I couldn't really stop to, to film anything properly. Um, so I do apologise about that but I'll hopefully go through some of the bits that I didn't address last night. So. I think I was in the middle of doing the belt when I got the, the message to say, hey, come and do a photo shoot tomorrow morning. <laughs> but as you can see, that actually turned out really well. What's I'm doing, this was just a little scrap of fabric, the biggest bit of fabric that I had left out of the, the sparkly tool. Um, the little drape bit has worked really well and it's attached onto the little belt detail. And the little star works really well as well, so that just hides the hook and eye closure. And there's a little press stud in there as well, which just anchors that and just stops it flopping about a bit too much or getting crushed if I'm bending or moving. Um, I also then put some further press studs on the belt, which attach to strategic points on the waistband of the dress, which just stops the dress sliding down um, because the dress needs to kind of be pulled up so it kind of billows over the top a little bit to create that kind of loose sort of baggy um, effect that you see in the image. Um, so the only way to do that because it's satin against satin it just slides down all the time is it was just to anchor it to the to the belt um, and that's actually worked really well so there's just a press stud on each of the side seams and one in the centre back as well which works really well just to anchor that. So then I had to, I finished all the hand sewing on it, I hand stitched down the, the facings under there as well and the the, li the bodice lining to the, the waist. Then I cut out some more stars from the scraps of tulle that I had left and just added them in onto the front here. So it's not quite the same as the, the detail on the original picture, she just wears three big stars. A, I didn't really like how that looked 
quite as much um, and I wanted to use the the stars from within the the tool as well which are a lot smaller than the stars on the original image so I just added a little cluster of stars and sparklies just on the front there just to add a little bit of interest to that kind of opening at the front where I was because I said it was looking a bit flat and a bit empty um, so that just finishes that off really nicely then I uh, edged the sleeves the same way as I did the neckline so just a bit of binding made from the very edge of the selvage of the tool which didn't have any sparkles on it so it's just a wide enough strip that I could fold it over to get the um, um well it's not really biased because it's on the straight so um but the same kind of technique so a folded barbed edge um, and that just finishes that off actually it makes it look quite nice um and then the last job I had to do was the headband and I think I filmed some of this actually yesterday evening um I was going to make a uh, a, a band out of the, the the satin fabric and then you know I'd, I had the moon and the star details when I suddenly remembered that I had a pre-made kind of circlet band um already which was all in silver um but I didn't really like the the pattern on the silver just wasn't quite right to work with the, the dress. I know it's only a tiny little detail, but I thought, you know, if I'm doing this, I'm going to do it nicely as much as I can for a Halloween costume. Um, but it just saved so much hassle for having, I mean, it's a very simple band anyway, but it was just having this done and made and knowing it fitted me. Um, and it had little dangles on it already, which is just like beads or, or sort of components from old jewellery I think um, and there were some other ones on here originally but I've taken the more goldy coloured ones off because there was no gold in the outfit so I didn't want any gold colours coming on there so I just left a couple of the silver sort of danglies I made the moon um, the same way as I made the star um, but I did actually find that once it was kind of in place it was a bit floppy and obviously this is sticking up above my head so it's liable to just get to droop and look a bit of a mess so I very quickly just um, used a strip of satin to make a little boning channel and I just popped a little bit of boning in there as well and that just stops it from flopping over too much um, then yeah then the the silver I covered up with this strip of velvet ribbon which I found um, in my stash which was just right and I think it just tones the silver down but it also allows the silver of the stars and the moon just to pop a little bit more um, as well so yeah so that was just really simple um, and this is just made from if you can see that um, it's just a piece of rigoline boning um, stitched together in a circle and then it had this silver braid put on top of it and stitched down right on the very the very edge of the rigoline where you can get a, a needle through it sort of safely um, and then I did the same with the with the velvet over the top I just stitched it along that top edge just on that one side because that's all it needs just to anchor it in place and then these little star appliques are just quickly tacked in place so yeah so that was quick and easy to do really um, and just the nice the finishing touch that the little outfit needed
yeah, my thoughts overall. Um, I've had really good fun doing this project. It was really fun to, to get involved from the very beginning of just looking through these wonderful old pattern catalogues with all these amazing designs and inspiration ideas in them. You know, I, I struggle to, to pick one, but the, the night theme, the star themed, lunar themes all kind of jumped out at me and I knew I had this fabric in my stash which would just be perfect and I've been waiting for a project to come along that I could use this fabric for and I couldn't be happier with the result really. Um, yeah, it's been a really, really fun project. I hope you've enjoyed following along with me as well. Um, do check out the playlist for everybody else that has taken part in the hashtag historical Halloween 2020 challenge. There are quite a few of us and our videos are all going up at various points in the week prior to Halloween. So be sure to check back and see what other people have been doing. You can also follow the hashtag on Instagram as well. Um, so if you don't want to sit and watch food videos, you can come and see some of our behind the scenes uh, photos on Instagram. So if you have enjoyed following along with me on this project and you'd like to see what else I do, please do check out my channel. Please like the video, please subscribe to be notified when my next video goes out. Um, I also have a link down below to my uh, coffee account, Kofi account. So if you'd like to buy me um, a coffee, just, you know, a couple of pounds, just to help support my channel and enable me to keep producing work like this, then that would be really appreciated. Um, otherwise, thank you very, very much for watching and I hope to see you again in my next video. Oh, and have an amazing, spooky, safe Halloween, whatever you are doing in this strange, strange year. Take care, guys. Bye. You pulled it off. I know. I'm too much flapping.